If you are just tuning in, you're still watching Waze. We're discussing diaspora penetration, the new tool for global penetration. What are your thoughts on the topic? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Waze Show Africa One with the hashtag Waze Show or SMS or WhatsApp to 08180384663. You see, you know, we've had a loaded topic, but before we just go again on the discussion, I'd like you to read some of the okay. comments that we have gotten. Okay, the comment I got is from Lyo. Lyo says, um, your guest is loved, coming back to do more. <laughs> so, Lou, you've you been loved over here. <laughs> okay, so Angela says, I'm loving today's discussion. Absolutely. It's simple value should drive it's simple. Value should drive our decision. And I think that that's what Shola really has been talking about. Exactly. Now, be before we left, you know, Shola, you broke it down for us. You, mm -hmm. you told us of the category of the people that would stay. And in simple words, let me just summarize what I heard. The people that have enough money and the people that don't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you have to say. So the ones that, you know, yeah, have enough money and the ones that can't, can't afford to leave. Mm -hmm. But then again, do you think it is possible for one to live in this country, grow up in this country, and still have global relevance. And I could, I could take, for example, mm -hmm. our musicians, but I, I need you to expound on this topic so that it doesn't look like the only hope that we have is it's to gather our life savings and live for uh, um, better, uh, better shows, shows and greener grass. You, 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 you've asked a very, you, I mean, as a matter of fact, you're asking the most important questions tonight, today. The, the truth is, before I left Nigeria, right, and before even like some of the people you know today who, who have left Nigeria who are doing the work that they're doing and doing across the world, mm. the global penetration starts from while you are in Nigeria. I tell you the truth. And for many people, it would start from like having enough value to connect to the world through the World Wide Web. There are one billion pages of information on the internet. There are several global communities to be a part of. Before I even smelled the shores of any other country, I was part of an organization at the age of nine years old in my little corner in Modakeke in Oshun State mm -hmm. called Society for Women and AIDS in Africa, SWAN. That was my first experience at doing something international. We were volunteering for anti-AIDS campaign in my secondary school. Mm -hmm. And then by the next level, I was volunteering in another nonprofit called Live Vanguard, where I heard about the World Exchange Program for the first time. And they were bringing students from the United Kingdom and taking students from Nigeria to the United Kingdom. I wasn't privileged to be one of those people, but we used to dance to welcome them in our nonprofit organization. So right from that point, I started realizing that you could create value in Nigeria and do things internationally. So by the time I published my book, I started reaching out to people outside Nigeria. I published my first book at the age of 20, you know, just right after I met Olakunle Shorion at the age of 16. So, so I listened to some of his materials. On the, there was a CD I listened to nearly 100 times wow. called Going Global. He made an audio material called Going Global. I listened to it at the age of 16, more than 100 times. And I started desiring to go global. Mm. So it put him and some other people put together a competition in the year 2010, when I was 20. And in that competition, I participated and became the winner in Nigeria to represent Nigeria in Kansas in the United States. That year, I didn't even get a visa appointment date, let alone being denied, all right? Many years later, two years later, I went by road from Nigeria to Ghana. So when I talk to people about being going global, it starts from looking for every single country that the Nigerian passport can go to. Exactly. There are about 40 countries or thereabouts. 16 of them are within uh, uh, the ECOWAS region that you can go to without any visa whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I started, going, I started going global with those kind of perspectives. I attended the first conference, international conference in 2012, you know, which is just about, I mean, less than 10 years ago, you know, in Ghana. And I went by road and nobody knew. I was fresh in the morning. Nobody knew I came <laughs> by road. We were welcome like every other person who flew in from 30 other African countries. And it was my first opportunity to speak to people from 30 African countries. Wow. So you can go global even from Nigeria. Hmm. Before that 2012, I joined an organization called the United Nations Global Alliance for ICT Development. Hmm. It's an online forum that helps you to meet other young people. So from now in Nigeria, even if you can't move abroad right now, you need to find those global communities that you can be a part of. You know, I joined the global community, the global shapers community of the World Economic Forum 
when I was 26. When I joined that community, the Lagos hub of that community, it's in seven, there are 7,000 hubs in the world, about 7,000 cities all over the world. And Lagos, Nigeria alone, has about eight hubs of the Global Shippers community. The Global Shippers community became one of the platforms that showed me new opportunities to be global without actually leaving Nigeria just yet. Mm. Then I was invited to the World Economic Forum. Then I was invited to South Africa. Then I was invited to go to Unleash in Denmark. And wow. it went on and on like that. Then I secured a job at Microsoft because of all of those things. Hmm. And then from Microsoft, I saw the world. And then I got to a point I knew, OK, this is the cap to my potential if I remain in Nigeria. Hmm. Where else do I need to go? Where, where in the world do I need to go? OK, my potential in technology would be much more valued in the United States of America. And I would be able to get additional value that I can contribute back to my continent from that place. Africa. That's like a summary of my journey. Well, I it's, think a, it's, okay. a, it's a very intimidating story. It's a very like, intimidating you, You've summary. talked about how 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 you've groomed yourself from you know you had that hunger at a very young age from the from 16 when you met uh, PK and at the end of the day you wrote your first book at the age of 20 that's that's a, that's a top notch comment but one thing i need to get here is this what about those who are left behind the young at heart those that are that would love to be like you right now can you give us um, examples that uh, of in of places or or um, books or, or items that they can actually you know um, read or look at or join or groups they can join to you know achieve what you have been able to achieve and grow yeah, their so, mindset. So usually, usually there are there are, there are about um, there are about ten organizations I usually talk about that young people can join okay. from wherever they are. Unleash.org. It's a global innovation lab. Mm -hmm. Unleash.org is a global innovation lab that brings people to different countries of Europe every single year. Mm -hmm. There's the Global Shippers Community of the World Economic Forum, right? Mm -hmm. The Global Shippers Community of the World Economic Forum gives opportunity to people who live in eight out of the, um, out of the 36 states in Nigeria where they are actually orbs of the Global Shippers, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that's the Global Shippers Community of the World Economic Forum. There's the African Youth and Governance Conference. It holds every year in, Niger in, in Ghana. It has held in Ghana, in South Africa, in Lusaka, Zambia. It has even held once in Nigeria. You know, and this, this organization allows people to be able to get the opportunity to meet people from other African countries, right? Mm -hmm. So there is, there is Unleashed, there is the Global Shippers Community, there is the African Youth and Governance Conference. Um, there is also IVE, IVE.org. It's a global leaders organization that is based in San Francisco, and they have an African reach right now, right? There is uh, Crans Montana, you know, there is Ashoka. There are several organizations like that. Um, all you can just do is search for Olushala Musa Global Communities, and oh, you might be able to find a few beautiful. things, a few, a few items like that online that will show you some of the communities that people can actually join. But these are some of the communities I have joined and that are very, very useful for people who want to begin to go global, even from Nigeria. And they are going global will just be the beginning from Nigeria, such that by the time they move out of the country, their value continues to, to grow. OK, so before we proceed to the next question, I'd like to take this from one of our viewers. You need to be a real professional to excel in a foreign land. Hmm. After all, majority of the immigrants are considered second-class citizens by host. Mm -hmm. The hypocrisy of the West is on that developing Africa. There is no place like home. Raphael Akori Zaria. Hmm. And so, <laughs> Shala, you've heard this. What is your take? Because, you know, I, if I get what Zaria is trying to say right, is that wherever you go, you would always be a second-class citizen, mm -hmm. no matter what you have achieved, according to Zaria. What's hmm. your take on that? Well, that, the, the first thing is, number one, that's not completely true. Mm. The, the, the second thing is that, and I will expatiate on both, the second thing is that you, if you don't know who Zaria is, you wouldn't know what has framed her opinion. Mm. Because you, she, might, she might be born in Britain. She might, be, she might have a parent that can you know, sponsor her to go abroad anytime she wishes. Mm. So you never can tell what framed her opinion. Mm. But for the average Nigerian who is currently deprived of water, of roads, of education, of social security, of good health, you would understand that first world countries provide you, first of all, the shelter of all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And the second answer to that question is that if you went abroad, or if you moved abroad, or moved abroad with that penetration mindset we discussed, 
-hmm. not with a relocation mindset. You're not a second class citizen anywhere because you did not give up your citizenship in your country. You are in that new country to gain new power. And that new power, your goal ultimately is to demonstrate that new power in that country and to use the reward they give you for that new power you wield mm -hmm. back in Africa. So you never feel like a second class citizen That's anywhere. Wow. First of all, you didn't go there like every other person who just went to escape from poverty. You went there to wield new power. You went there to show your responsibility to every other human that you meet. You've gone there to solve critical problems that they will value you for. They will literally beg you with their residency and their citizenship because of the value that you bring, because of the patents you have registered, because of the solutions you bring, because of the number of break groundbreaking surgeries you perform, because of the kind of teaching you can do, because of how many languages you can speak, because of the kind of teaching you can do, because of the kind of education, not schooling now, that you can show to their people. So for all of this value, you will never be a second class citizen in the way many other people who migrate are considered. Listen, the International Labour Organization, ILO, released a report. 682 million people moved around the world in the year 2018, in the year 2019, before COVID. 682 million people. Migration is global business. It is not some individual's prerogative. There are people who move from Europe to America to come and work, from one first world country to another first world country. Mm -hmm. There are people who move from the United Kingdom to America. There are people who move from America to Australia. Moving around is the nature of humans. Many of us are just saying we don't want to move because we can't move. If wow. we could move, then you would know who really wants to move. Well, if today we are given the passport and they say, I'm not even saying they're giving us the American passport. If they just said today that the Nigerian passport can go anywhere in the world, then you will see how many people can really move. People will move <laughs> because now they have the power to move. And when they, maybe when they stay six months there and they start missing Ikokore, perhaps they will want to come back home. Mm. Or they will decide to create a solution to how Ikokore can become a global food item that exactly. can be found on every table like pasta and macaroni. Wow. That is very key. Like, that is very key. So the two things that I've taken mm -hmm. from what you've said, so two mindsets. There is a relocation mindset and mm -hmm. there is the penetration mindset. Exactly. Very interesting. Isi, you have some comments from guests. Okay. Um, my comment goes thus. Hello, Wes. Um, surely the world has become global. Incidentally, today we need global capacity to help and impact Nigeria also. Benson. From Benson. Okay, so I'll take mine from Ade. Ade is our adherent Ade viewer. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. Great work from you in the studio. Empowered guest and contributor. Our leaders should make Nigeria a better place to reside. We in diaspora love home and would like to come home to invest. However, all infrastructures and security should be in place. Mm. That, so th that's, that's a, that's a very good advice. Thank you very much, Adi. Mm -hmm. But I want to tackle the, um, the question of really when you leave, coming back to invest. Because as mm -hmm. you said, Shola, you have to be a local champion before you go and penetrate globally. Yeah. We've all agreed. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about leaving, because you can't just leave without achieving anything and they want to come mm -hmm. back and invest and it's very difficult. Can you expand on that? So for people that have just left mm -hmm. for, um, for the fact that they just want to run away from Nigeria, how do they change? How do they begin to change their relocation mindset into a penetration, penetration mindset? mindset? Thank you. Thank you for that. So the first thing is that they need to get well wherever they are. That's the first thing. They need to pursue whatever makes them completely OK wherever they are. And then there, that is a very generic statement, because there is no such thing as being completely OK. But at least the fact that they can experience some form of comfort, where they can feel that I'm comforted to comfort others, I'm blessed to bless others. I have succor so others can find succor in me. Mm -hmm. So once they get to that point that they have some level of comfort, no matter how small, then they should begin to think about um, responsibility of doing things back home. And I'll tell you two things that will drive that. The first one is the most, is the strongest motivation and is reward. Reward is the first one. And the second one is patriotism. Patriotism is difficult to come by because it will take time for you to build it again, particularly if you left as somebody who was angry, who was completely mad at the Nigerian situation. Exactly. So let's start with reward. The reward and what we've been sharing with people and what, you know, PK or Akonshori has been sharing with people is that Africa will not cease to become a critical market 
There are 900 million people. The people even say 1.2 billion on the continent of Africa who must wear clothes, who must eat, who must wear shoes. And nobody knows Africa more than you who were born in Africa, who spent the first three decades of your life in Africa, or maybe four, right? So you must remember that there is still a reward in the population of Africa. So now, when you were in Nigeria, you couldn't afford to buy a house in Lekki. Now, with your dollars, with your dollars now, you can bring money back and invest in real estate in Nigeria. Because people will continue to live in Nigeria. If a million people live tomorrow morning, all right, if one million people live tomorrow morning, there's more than maybe one million children that will be born over the next three months. Hmm. Because Nigeria is going towards 250 million by the year, no, towards 500 million by the year 2050. Wow. We're going towards 500, our birth rate is alarming. So what I'm saying is that there will continue to be people who need those things within Nigeria. You must understand that if you want a market, Nigeria is still a very important market. Okay, so that's the reward will be able to drive you to know that, hey, that's somewhere you can actually do something. And for those who will counter that immediately with, so how much will I make in Naira that will be equivalent to what I need in dollars? Global businessmen don't think like that. Hmm. How much is Microsoft in Nigeria adding to the wealth of Bill Gates? How much is Google in Nigeria adding to the wealth of Larry Page and Sergey Brin? Hmm. Yet they still keep that market. You know why? Because it's a long-term game for them. It's a 30 years game for them. It's a 40 years game for them. So if you have a, if you have a house in Agege or Yanopaja and all of the rent you take every year is not equivalent to how much you make in two months in America, does not mean that that is not an investment for the long term. You need to think long term because the economy of Nigeria will not remain like that forever. The value of Nigeria will not. So you are buying, if you know a little about the stock market, you are buying into Nigeria when Nigeria is in the deep. Nigeria is, is spiraling down. That's where you're buying into Nigeria. You're buying into Nigeria where the value of the euro is high, the value of the dollar is high. But you will reap it when Nigeria gets to one dollar to one naira. Because it is still possible and it will still happen in the future. There is a possible future for Nigeria. Okay? I'm not one of those people who say Nigeria will be great. No. Mm -hmm. If you study international futures or strategic forecasting, you will see that in part of the possible futures of Nigeria, there is a future where Nigeria is actually great. It might be one in 400,000 possibilities, but there is one possibility. And in that possible future, mm -hmm. you will reap your reward. And you begin to think like that. So reward is the first step. Then patriotism reminds you that no matter how far you go, your corn is still roasting at home in Nigeria. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. You have your family. Every mm -hmm. single Nigerian who is in diaspora today mm -hmm. has an extended family member, has an extended uncle and auntie, Mm. whose death or demise or kidnap or um, a death from a wrong, a botched surgery will still inflict pain on you in America, wherever you are. Mm. So that patriotism will remind you that no matter how far you go, I'll tell you a very, very quick story. In year 2015, during the Lagos elections, the gubernatorial elections, my wife was accosted at gunpoint mm. and they took our car on CMB Road in Magodo. We found the car after the next few days However, in 20, 20, 2019, when the presidential election was too old, that evening, I took my family and got on a plane and I jetted out of Nigeria. And as I was jetting out of Nigeria, I heard my spirit whisper to me that in Yoruba, because I'm a very, very astound Yoruba speaker in Yoruba, and the transliteration is that there is no powerful man who can enter into a tiny gorge and take his entire family with him inside it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that whispered to me in my spirit. And you know what happened the night of the elections? My parents were robbed at gunpoint for wow. four hours. For four solid hours. What does that mean? It means I'll be foolish if I'm in the United States and I'm not contributing to the conversations in the least. Conversations. Talk, they say, is cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Talk is affordable. In the least, contributing to the conversations that will move Nigeria forward. So it can be protected, so that Nigeria can be better for anybody who is affiliated with me, my friends, my family, all of the people that I can today bring back. And there will be a day I'll fly back into Nigeria for a conference, for an opportunity. I do that several times in a year. Mm -hmm. Last year, maybe last year, maybe only twice because of coronavirus. Twice, despite coronavirus. The previous year, maybe five times. I know Nigerians who visit Nigeria in 18 times a year to come and monitor what they're doing. I know at least one person who visits Nigeria almost 18 times a year. 
So we will always have this responsibility and we can't run away from it. So reward is number one and patriotism is number two. Reward okay. and patriotism. This is, I'm sorry, but we can't just stay. <laughs> we can't accommodate another question. But okay. it has been wonderful. I mm -hmm. think I, I can't even recall all the things that I have picked up. But no most problem. importantly, <laughs> I picked up two things, the relocation mindset mm. and the... What? Penetration, penetration mindset. Penetration mindset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so mm. much, Shola. And you know, this discussion is not finished. We wish mm. that, and we hope that when we call on you again, you would afford us mm. the privilege and the opportunity mm. to come back and to discuss this very burning topic. Mm. Now, many, many thanks, many thanks. <laughs> Shout out to Lakun Shoria, amazing, amazing thought leader and iconoclast whose philosophies and thoughts today have helped me to be able to navigate the global waters. We thank, thank you him too. We thank him, and he's a friend of the house. Now, ways was bettered from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSRO focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. If you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles because this will be an all year round engagement. So tell a friend to keep all eyes on ways. In case you missed this very important quote today, a man does not wander far from where his corn is roasting, as an African proverb. See you on Monday at 8 p.m. where we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.